All right. Hi, Amanda. Now, talk to your patient from the front. Don't walk in and talk to the back. So speak to your patient's face. How are you doing? I'm well, thank you. All right. We're going to do some uh, exercise with your leg. And just let me know if anything's uncomfortable. Okay. okay. I'm going to move around behind you. Okay. I'm not sneaking up on her. I do need to remove some pillows, but maintain some draping, but not to the point that is interfering. She's under here somewhere. <laughs> okay. There you go. Now, here, I can quickly pull that up, and she's all covered. Now, I'm going to cradle her leg here, and I'm going to put my hand right in the gluteal region and press on her hip because I've got to stabilize. Everything else we've had them laying on the table and the table was stabilizing the proximal joint and we don't have that. So here I'm gonna give a good firm push and bring that back into extension. And we don't, we're not going for hip stretching, but a lot of people have been in flexion so much that that feels like it's actually stretching the hip and it's actually her normal range of motion of what she has available. So give a good push there bring that knee back and I can get from here that knee and hip flexion here so you can combine those in it's more awkward to try to get that straight uh, isolated hip flexion so I wouldn't like to do that because I'm straining my back so from here that works and then I can just go right into the abduction making sure that she is properly covered and I'm still stabilizing the hip but keeping that in her frontal plane here. If you get a really tall somebody, some over six footer, you may need a little step stool coming up here. A couple times, we're good. We can do here some rotation, still stabilizing, rotation. Okay, it's not the greatest but I've got to stabilize the hip. I can't just start cranking on the femur with the hip just wobbling around all over the place. Cool? From here, I might want to put the pillow back. And I've done the knee. And then I can start working on the foot in the same way that you've done the foot already. That hasn't changed. One thing I didn't add that you can do in supine is the patella. You can do a little quick range of motion to the patella. The patella is like the foot. You need a good um, firm hand grip or else it gets ticklish. We can take the patella if they're really relaxed. The patella can shift to the right and to the left. And then you can press from the top and the bottom and it should rock back and forth. We just do a little quick movements of the patella. And that's pretty relaxing. Anyone who has pain in their knee if this might take be all it takes to kind of help us decrease some of that pain. Because the patella has a tendency, if it's not used a lot, to get stuck. So just wiggle the patella around, but don't tickle. Cool? So once you've done the foot and ankle, that didn't change, and you're in a little bit different orientation, but attention to dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion, and eversion, and then all the digits. So cool? that what you just said to my knee was in where it's supine? I, you could do that in supine or in sideline. Side okay, gotcha. mm -hmm. okay. So the big thing here is stabilize the hip. Sound good? All right, go to it.